Catherine de Medici was born in Florence in 1519. Her great-grandfather was Lorenzo the Magnificent. If you've been listening to the previous episodes, then you've heard this name before. Lorenzo was one of the most influential and powerful men in Florence and Italy during the 15th century, and his family carried on that power throughout many, many years. Her father, also named Lorenzo, was the Duke of Urbino and ruler of Florence, and her grandfather was Piero the Unfortunate, and he was Lorenzo the Magnificent's oldest son. So she was born in 1519, and unfortunately, she became an orphan just weeks after being born. Her mother was a cousin of the King of France, and she died two weeks after giving birth to Catherine. She had had a healthy delivery. However, a few days after giving birth, she came down with violent fevers that she never recovered from. Her father passed away a week after her mother's death, and it's believed that they both may have fallen victim to the plague. After Catherine's parents passed away, she was raised by her paternal grandmother, Alfonsina Orsini, until she passed away in 1520. She then was taken care of by her aunt and other relatives in Florence. In 1527, the Medici family had to flee Florence due to opposition to Pope Clement VII, and Catherine was held hostage and then later placed in a convent. She would end up being raised by nuns in several different convents during her early years. In 1529, the Holy Roman Emperor's troops took siege on the city of Florence, and many of them called for the death of young Catherine, the only daughter of the man who was once the ruler of Florence. After the city surrendered in 1530, Pope Clement brought Catherine to Rome so that she could be under his care. But despite the unstable upbringing, she was very well educated. Convent schools were often a place where you could receive a very good education. She was described as being artistic, outgoing, energetic, courageous, all these qualities that would later help her during her reign as queen regent. Once under the care of her uncle, the Pope, she had many suitors from all over Europe, including the second son of Francis I, the King of France. Pope Clement quickly decided that having her marry the son of the King of France would be the best option for them as far as political ties went. So by the time Catherine was the age of 14, her uncle had arranged for her to be married to Henry, the Duke of Orleans, who was the same age as her. The two 14-year-olds were married in 1533 in a grand wedding ceremony with much celebration. And as you can imagine, the marriage of Catherine the Medici To Henry, the Duke of Orleans, was quite the affair, but not just the wedding, the entire lead up to the wedding day was filled with extravagant displays. Although Catherine was not exactly royalty, even though she was the daughter of the Duke, and she had her own title of Duchess of Urbino, which she was really never able to use, even though the people of Florence did call her the Little Duchess, she had a lot of wealth to her name. The marriage contract stipulated that Clement VII would, at his own discretion, furnish his illustrious relative with clothing, ornaments, and jewels. The Pope, however, still had to borrow quite a bit of money for the marriage, even though the new Duke of Florence, Alessandro de' Medici, and people like Isabella d'Este gifted her jewels, gold, silver, and silks to make into dresses and bedsheets. And since the marriage was all for political gains, the Pope really wanted to impress his new allies in France. Catherine was not exactly what they would call beautiful, so they wanted to make sure that she won them over with her extravagant trousseau, which is all the things a bride has for her wedding and marriage, like jewelry, clothing, and linens. Isabella d'Este was pretty much put in charge to make sure that Catherine was dressed perfectly, but also for her trousseau to make the best impression. 14-year-old Catherine herself wanted to impress her new husband and the court of France, and since she was quite short and small, she had a pair of high heels made for herself for her wedding day. She had gowns made of the finest fabrics in Italy, like lace, brocades, and damask, and fabrics that were also embroidered with silk, silver, and gold and were produced by the finest seamstresses in Florence. Her jewels were just as extravagant, if not more, and consisted of six ropes of pearls that included 25 pear-shaped pearls that she would wear around her waist. She also had other jewelry made of emeralds, sapphires, rubies, and large diamonds. Bed hangings and crimson sheets were also included in her trousseau, as well as the finest made undergarments. In total, she had about 150 garments. Furniture, carpets, home decorations, and pieces of art were also brought along with her, and there was also a chest named the Casket of Rock Crystal that has 24 panels depicting the life of Jesus. 
After a farewell banquet at the Palazzo Pitti in Florence, she began her journey to France in September of 1533. On her journey, she was accompanied by her ladies-in-waiting, noblemen, artists, and about 70 Frenchmen to escort them all. The voyage was by sea and included 18 galleys, six brigantines, and three ships. When she arrived into Marseille in October, cannons were fired and she was greeted by a cheering crowd as both French and Italian music was played and the celebrations lasted for several days. She wore a gown of gold and silver silk and rode a horse dressed in gold brocade, while 12 ladies rode behind her with a royal and papal guard with a coach draped in black velvet behind them. And all of this was just for her arrival, where she was greeted with royal gifts from the French emissary. The Pope made his own entry into the city, where he entered with his own entourage of cardinals, bishops, and even more Italian nobles. But Catherine's entrance into the city must have been an incredible sight to see, where she resembled true royalty with all her riches and beautiful attire, just what Isabella d'Este had envisioned for the young duchess. Now Henry, her husband-to-be, was said to have been tall and handsome, and she seemed to have quickly fallen for him, although unfortunately, Henry didn't feel the same way about her. During the days of celebration before the wedding, he jousted and danced for her and with her, which made her happy, of course, but it could have just been to make his father happy. And we'll get more into that in part two when we talk about her marriage. The wedding ceremony took place on October 23rd, 1533. The two 14-year-olds were married at the chapel and Catherine took on the title of Duchess of Orleans. For the wedding, she wore a gown with gold brocade and velvet, and it was decorated with precious gems and trimmed with ermine fur. And of course, on her head, a gold crown. After the wedding took place, there was a banquet, a masquerade ball, and plenty of wine. That night, they were led to their very lavish nuptial chamber, where they consummated their marriage, all while his father, Francis, the king of France, watched on to make sure the deed was done, and so neither party could claim the marriage was not valid. The following morning, the Pope went into their chamber to bless them, and the couple went out and another exchange of gifts took place. The King of France and his court left in early November to Burgundy, and the Queen, Catherine, and her ladies-in-waiting would join them in a couple weeks' time. This time of celebration was also the last time she would see her uncle, the Pope, as he would die a year later in September of 1534 in Rome. In part two of this series, we'll go over Catherine's marriage to Henry, how she became the Queen of France, the struggles she faced trying to give him an heir, and her reign as Queen Mother. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please make sure to follow over on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook so you can see more medieval and Renaissance history content. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.